In this video, I'm going to talk to you about locking dates in Xero. Locking dates in Xero, how to do it and why you would do it. What is the benefit? Let's head into Xero and I'll talk to you about locking your dates. Okay, we're in Xero and we're going to look at locking our dates, but let's look at reporting first of all. I'm going to go into accounting and I'm going to pick up a report that I've created, which is our last year's profit and loss account. So for Happy Housewares, our year end is the 31st of March 2019. These accounts have been finished, completed, and these are the results for our year. So we know that we've got a profit, there's not much in here because it's demo data, so let's not get bogged down about what's here or what isn't here, but we know that we've got an operating profit of 4545 for our financial year. Now in Xero, all your transactions are date driven. That means if you input a transaction, the date of that tr transaction determines where that feeds into. So if we were to input another transaction dated the 31st of March 2019, it would feed into this period and it would change these results. Now we do not want that to happen because this year end has passed, the statutory accounts have been prepared, they've been published, they've gone to shareholders, they've gone to company's house, wherever your results have gone and we want to make sure that these results are not change. So let's look at if we have a new purchase invoice. So we get a bill from the bank, it's an overdraft renewal fee. It might be dated 31st of March or we might have put that date in by mistake but there's £250 going to bank fees. If at this stage we approve this invoice, just let's look at what happens. Go back to reporting and back to our last year's profit and loss account. And look what's happened. Remember that figure that was 4545? Well, that figure has changed. We didn't want that to happen. So how do we stop it happening? Okay, so let's go and find that bill again. Okay, I find that bill. So what I want to do, I want to remove it. So I'm going to say void. Void the bill. Back to our last year's profit and loss account. And now it's back to the figure that it should be. So how do we stop that happening? We stop it by setting a lock date. So where do we find lock dates? We go to accounting and we go to advanced. You need advisor status to go here. We pick up financial settings. And then if we scroll down, we see our year end is the 31st of March. And here's the section to lock dates. There's two choices. You can stop all users except advisors. That's assuming that they're trustworthy and they know what they're doing or stop absolutely all users. I actually prefer this one. So I'm going to say I'm going to stop all users making any changes and I need to head back and choose the 31st of March. And then I would just save that. Okay, so no changes can be made up to the 31st of March, 2019. I chose that date because it's a year end date and the year end accounts have been finalized. Sometimes it might be a month end date if you report monthly and you want to make sure that your figures don't change after month end, you can continue putting lock dates in throughout the year. So once we've done that, what then happens if again we have this bill. So here we have the bill from the bank. Let's give it a reference number and let's see what happens when we go to the green approve. And here we get a message from Zero. Your accounts are locked up until 31st of March. Your action must occur after this date. So that's perfect. Let's just save it as draft again. And let's do something slightly different. So we're going to go to advanced again, pick up financial settings, go down to the lock dates. This time I'm going to put a lock date for all users except advisors. I'm going to remove that one and I'm going to save. Now if I go back to the bill, 
Here we go. Go to the green approve. And it lets me because I'm an advisor. So again, if we picked up our profit and loss for the year, we remember that figure was 4545 profit. The profit has now been reduced because we've got an additional bank fee. So just to be aware of that, when you're in the financial settings, when you go down to the lock dates, there are two options. My preference is to stop all users. If you do need to make a change, you can go back and you can remove this. But it's very easy to input something in zero by mistake. It might even be that you just input a wrong date and you find that your figures are changed and you don't want them to be. So my suggestion would be to use this option here to stop all users and to lock your dates in zero. It really is recommended. It's a superpower in zero, it will make sure that your figures are accurate and they're not amended by mistake. That's lock dates in zero. Always, if you like my video, why don't you give me a thumbs up and a subscribe to the channel to get notified when new videos appear. Until next time, happy zeroing.